I'm going to talk to you inshallah about something which is very dear to me in my experience as being a new Muslim. And as you can hear from my name, my name is made of two parts, Muhammad and Tim. So Muhammad is the new bit and Tim is the old bit. And that's because I, as the brother kindly said, Jazakallahu Khairan, I became a Muslim at the age of 14 years old in Newcastle in the United Kingdom. And some of you may have heard the story of how I came to Islam. But what I want to talk to you about today is something that happened to me after I became a Muslim. And many of you may have experienced this feeling. So you built up the courage and you came and said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah I bear witness that there is no God that deserves worship except Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. And you felt like the best anyone can feel in the world. You felt like you had been given this whole world and everything that is in it. And then after a few moments and a few days, something sets in. And it's the daunting realization that now I have to figure out this new religion. I have to try to understand what is required of me. I have to try to understand how to be this Muslim out of this religion that I have embraced. And a lot of new Muslims go through this phase of feeling just a little bit lost and a little bit like they need somebody to give them some advice. And so my talk today is all about the importance of knowledge for a new Muslim. Because really, it's knowledge that takes you to that second step. I think most of the people today, we may well have some non-Muslim guests, but most of the people today will be people who have taken that step to become a Muslim. To say that there is no God that deserves worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. But the question is, what next? What do I do after that? And the answer to that is really very, very, very simple. It's so incredibly simple. I can explain it to you in just a few moments. Firstly, we have to learn our religion. Because Islam is a religion that is based upon knowledge. And it's this first part that I want to talk to you about. And then I'll talk to you about what will come after you learn. Because there's another step after you learn. First of all, what is the importance of knowledge in Islam? Why is it so important to know your religion, to understand your religion? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran in Surah Ali Imran, the third surah of the Quran in the 18th ayah. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa hu wal malaikatu wa ulul ilm qa'iman bil qist la ilaha illa hu al azizul hakim. Allah bears witness. Allah gives a witness, He gives a testimony that there is nothing that deserves to be worshipped except Him. There is no tree, no sun, no moon, no stone, no star, no person living or dead that deserves any worship except Him. Allah bears witness to this. And along with this witness of Allah, the angels also bear witness. And along with the angels, the people of knowledge bear witness. They bear witness that he is maintaining his creation in justice. There is nothing that deserves worship but him, the exalted, the wise. So he tells us that there are three groups who bear witness that only he deserves to be worshipped. The first is Allah himself, followed by the angels, followed by the people of knowledge. And this tells us the importance of knowledge in Islam. Because it's those people who know their religion who bear witness 
that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So there is a very strong link between a person becoming a Muslim and making this testimony and between a person who learns their religion and implements that knowledge that they have. More than that, Allah told us in the Quran in Surah Fatir, it's the 35th Surah of the Quran in the 28th Ayah, He told us, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ The people who really fear Allah, and fearing Allah is an act of worship, brothers and sisters. This is something we strive to achieve in Islam. To fear Allah's punishment and hope in His mercy. But who are the people who really achieve that? Who are the people who really can be said that they have achieved the fear of Allah as He deserves to be feared? إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ the people who really fear Allah among his servants are the people of knowledge. And so when you get knowledge, it gives rise to the right kind of fear and the right kind of actions. More than that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran commanded our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make a particular supplication, a particular dua. He was commanded to say, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And there's no doubt that every single supplication that he made, it was a beautiful supplication and a one that is much needed. But for himself, he was commanded to say, my Lord, Rabbi, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Give me more knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have knowledge even before testifying that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So he said, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ In Surah Muhammad, ayah number 19. No, have knowledge that there is no God that deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And then seek forgiveness for your sins. The most famous book of narrations that we have of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. And Imam al-Bukhari mentioned this ayah under a chapter. The chapter that knowledge comes before statement and action. So before you say anything in Islam, or before you do anything in Islam, you need to have knowledge. Knowledge of what it is that you're saying, knowledge of what it is that what you are doing, knowledge of the actions that are gonna come about when you do those things. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, Whoever Allah wants good for, He gives him knowledge of this religion. Whoever Allah wants good for, He gives him knowledge of this religion. Look at this wonderful gathering. We've been gathered here today to learn something. We've already heard a speaker give out knowledge and you've taken some of that on board. And I'm going to share some small things with you and inshallah you will take some of that on board. This is a sign that Allah wants good for you. Because whoever Allah wants good for, He gives him knowledge of the religion. But there is something now that has to come along with knowledge. So we're learning, every day we're learning something. And we're going to talk in a moment about the kind of things that a new Muslim should be learning. But every day we're learning something. Maybe it's how to pray. Maybe we learned a new surah from the Quran. Maybe we learned a new saying from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Maybe we learned something that is allowed for us or something that is forbidden for us to do. So every day we learn something. Now what do we have to do when we learn something? 
Now we have to put it into practice. Because in reality, knowledge in Islam is not about how much you know. The person with a doctorate is not necessarily better than a person who only knows 10 hadith. How can that be? Because knowledge is judged on how much of it you put into practice. So today you're going to learn a lot of things inshallah from different people. But the question is not going to be how much knowledge do you have? But what percentage of that knowledge do you put into practice? And I'm going to evidence what I say with two verses or passages from the Quran. The first in Surah Al-Zumar, which is the 39th Surah of the Quran, Ayah number 9. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُوا رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ And listen to this carefully because you might not catch it on the first time. It's a little bit tricky to catch this one. As for the one who is standing devoutly all throughout the night, standing in prayer, prostrating, standing up, fearing the, the hereafter, what is going to come, and hoping for the mercy of his Lord, say, are those who know equal to those who don't? Only the people of knowledge will understand. There are two proofs in this ayah, at least two proofs, for what I'm about to say to you. That the virtue of knowledge is in acting. How did Allah describe the people of knowledge? He didn't describe them. He said, to the, he said are those who know equal to those who don't? How did he describe the people of knowledge? Did he describe them as they have a master's degree and a doctorate and then they go on to be a professor and then they tell everyone he described them as spending the night in prayer because their knowledge led them to action their knowledge led them to action and that's why they spend the night in prayer fearing what is going to come hoping for the mercy of their lord prostrating standing up reciting the quran because they know that they have to act upon their knowledge. And then Allah Azza wa Jal said, Innama yatazakkar ulul albab. The only people who will understand this are the people of knowledge. So knowledge, it gives way to, to action. It gives way to action. And then more than that, a very small chapter of the Quran that I think many of you might know. Surah Al-Asr in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Wal-Asr inna al-insana lafi khusr Allah swore by time He said by time Indeed mankind is in a state of loss Mankind they are in a state of loss They're not winning, they're losing except for a certain people Illa al-lazina amanu Except for those people who believe and they do good deeds. So it's not just about belief, but it's about converting what you know, the knowledge, into beliefs that you act upon. Iman, that is something you act upon and your actions are a part of your iman. And good deeds emphasize that within that faith that you have are good deeds that come about because of the knowledge that you have. So it's not just about learning your religion, but it's also about acting upon what you know in the, in the best way that you possibly can. And then someone might say, okay, what comes after that? What comes after that is what is mentioned in, the, in this chapter. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ 
وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ Then they advise each other to the truth. So once you have learned your religion, and you are starting to act upon it as much as you can, and all of us are learning, we're all still learning. The most knowledgeable of us in this gathering is still learning. But you've started to learn. And you're making a real effort. You're making a real focus to try your best to act upon as much of it as you can. Then what do you do? Then you start to tell other people. Because in Islam, we are religion. We love to share the good that we have. There are some religions, they don't like to share the good that they have. They keep it within themselves. But Islam, we love to share the good with everybody. So we tell other people. We tell other people what? We tell them what we know because we don't speak about Allah with our knowledge. We tell them what we know. And we tell them those things that we act upon. Because when you act upon something and people can see from you that you're acting upon it, what happens? Now they want to take knowledge from you. They want you to tell them how to achieve the happiness that our brother spoke about a few moments ago. So now you learned how to get that happiness. And what are you going to do today? Inshallah, you're going to go out and implement those five keys that he spoke about. Jazallahu khaira. And then what are you going to do? You're going to tell your friends and your colleagues and your co-workers how to achieve that happiness too.